Hey y'all, good morning. It is a beautiful morning in my butterfly garden and I have so much to show you, so let's go. First stop down the garden trail is right here in this little patch where I told you I just dumped all my seeds and I have seedlings coming up. So I have been watering this every day. It's been raining a lot, which is fabulous, but when it's not raining, I am watering this and hopefully I will get even more seedlings. A little further down, what do you notice about my first wetland garden? All the grasses are gone. I took them out because they were hogging the whole space. And as much as I love the grasses, they just kind of sit there and don't bloom. And I have all these aquatic plants like my scarlet rose mallow right there, which gets beautiful flowers on it, and a thistle that is um, native to the panhandle, but I'm trying it here. It's called um, coyote thistle. That's, that's the one right there. And I grew some swamp milkweed from seed, and I put a couple of those in here. And I've got some other plants. I've got another Stokes Aster that I grew from seed that I want to put in here. So I moved all the grasses to a bin of water, and I think we're going to put them out front by our little mini fake pond. I know I've talked to you about that before. We'll just pot them up and put them in there. So we'll still have the grasses for the little skippers. There's a spice bush swallowtail. I am having great success with the zinnias in pots. I love this. I love putting all one kind in one pot like it did with these Isabellinis. I mean, look how gorgeous they are. So I had another pot of them over by the butterfly enclosure and I just moved that pot out here because it's getting more sun and I feel like the butterflies are more inclined to visit them in an open area than they are up against the enclosure. So now I have two big pots of zinnias in this section and the section so overgrown by the plants that are planted in here you don't really even notice the pots, which I love. I added another enclosure to my outdoor enclosure. Another enclosure in the enclosure. Go ahead, take a minute, just tap the like button, tap it, and if you're not a subscriber, tap subscribe. Okay, and um, because <laughs> my, one of my bronze fennel pots see that tall pot back there was egg bombed so now the eastern black swallowtails let me unzip so you can see some of these guys have their own enclosure like their own because the thing about this is I just said in my last video I don't bring a lot in just a few but with these guys like all their eggs are together like they're all there, all over the place on one plant. How do you just like take a few eggs in and leave the rest? I mean, monarchs, you'll find an egg here and an egg there. Um, it's also the same with the um, polydomus. Oh my gosh, wait till I show you them. They are already eating all of my um, woolly Dutchman's pipe vine. So now these guys, look how cute, have a home of their own. And then there's some medium sized ones back in there. And then there are some eggs also on this fennel. They're just all in there together. And they seem very happy. So for the moment, we have the 
giant swallowtails and spice bush swallowtails. Um, monarchs and maybe a few gulf fritillaries. There's like, I think there's only one monarch caterpillar in there. Because <laughs> that's all I've got. And then the swallowtails. And then over here, I just set up this morning because I've been noticing lately, I have tons of caterpillars and I find tons of eggs for golf fritillaries and zebra longwings, but they disappear because I have tons of lizards. So I just set up these two enclosures and these are just pots of the Maypop incense. Um, Passiflor incense, the hybrid one that I'm growing just for food. And so if I find anybody, they're just going to get their little selves tossed in here. Because why not, right? Why not? <laughs> I think I'm getting some eggs. Okay. The hair is up, and if you thought I was done showing you everything, I'm not. I uh, have a couple of new people to show you. I have a monarch butterfly that I'm about to release. And a spice bush swallowtail. Look how beautiful it is. red pentas heading to the nectary. I just put them in my car and I'm gonna drive them over there. Y'all this is a um, eastern tiger swallowtail that is the dark morph. Only the females take on this dark coloring. And there's actually two of these in my garden right now. I can't believe it. Hey y'all, it is Tuesday. Yes, it's Tuesday evening. I have been playing in my garden all day today. I have had the best time planting, starting seeds, working on some things for my business. I took a load of red pentas over to the nectary, um, so they'll be there ready to buy. And uh, since the nectary was closed, I met Catherine there. We got to sit and visit. It was so nice just sitting and talking native plants with someone. So anyway, it's been a great day. And I'm just going to go show you, um, you know, I'm just going to go show you one or two things that I did. So I planted a few more scarlet rose mallows. Those are these. They're native. They're aquatic. So they're in my aquatic section. And um, I picked up two Asclepius perennis from the nectary. There's one there and there's one over there. This is a type of milkweed that actually stays, has leaves, is evergreen. It doesn't go dormant. So that's the one I was talking about. Did I talk about it? Yeah, in my last video. And then what else did I put in here? Oh! I split, I divided my bushment 
and I took the chunk that I divided off and put it in over here. So right now it's looking a little scrappy, but I'm hoping it will survive. There was a good clump of root on it and because I want it over here on this side to keep those little snacky snacker rat mice whatever they are away from all my swamp milkweed that is growing back so nicely over here this is the bushman that I took um, the division from <laughs> you can't even tell I mean look how full it is so I hope that works because then as this fills out more I can take more divisions and just keep spreading the love because my swamp milkweed is looking super happy still and I'm happy to report I did find two baby caterpillars on it and I got them off of it before the lizards got them so that's score two for monarchs and negative two for the lizards my sleepy hibiscus is just covered with little buds. I mean, look at them all. So, it's, mm, I just, I, can you tell I'm absolutely in love with my wetland garden? And look at all the, um, the buds on my Stokes Aster that should be blooming. I moved my potted spice bush out here into the garden so that way it can get eggs laid on it and then I can just pick up the whole plant and put it in an enclosure. Look at the zinnias right here. Are they not incredible? Look at them. They're gorgeous. I love them. And then also I brought one of my black cherry trees that's potted and I put it right there so it can get eggs laid on it because my black cherry that's right back there, see it's sticking up? I stood here while I was watering it and I watched a female eastern tiger swallowtail lay eggs on it and yes I did take cuttings and brought the eggs in and as soon as I have caterpillars then I will move them onto one of my potted black cherries which I now have three of them in pots set around the more butterfly section of my garden that gets more sun before they were on the other end of the garden in the shade and they weren't getting much attention but we're we're done with that. They're going they're going to be getting attention now. And then best of all, um while I was at the nectary, um I told you I bought a couple of aquatic milkweed, Asclepias perennis, but I also bought a potted wafer ash. So, the cuttings on the way fresh do not last that long, and my poor caterpillar that's left, it was always like crunchy leaves, and I was constantly changing it. My poor way for ash tree is, um, like, it just, like, needs to not have any more cuttings. So now my last little sweet baby is on an actual little tree. <laughs> Let me go show you. Okay, back to this guy. <laughs> He's still on his leaf. <laughs> But I, I do want to say, um, the black cherry tree is the host plant for these guys, and so is the wafer ash, of which I have both. And the black cherry cuttings do way much better than wafer ash cuttings. So I did try to put some black cherry in with them, and um, they wouldn't go to it. So I'm guessing they just don't like to switch once they've started. One food type... I don't know, but isn't that just an adorable little caterpillar? Look at how adorable. This is an eastern black swallowtail caterpillar munching on some fennel. Oh wait, here's another one being super cute. Look at this guy. I 
And then a lot of them are uh, J hanging too. Actually, this one. I think this one is uh, pupating right now. Oh my gosh, well hang on, let me get a better camera angle, I'll let you watch. So y'all, how amazing was that? And what good timing, I just happened to be out here. Look at it go, it's trying to jiggle off. Do you see how like right there is the rest of its um, molted exoskeleton? It's just wiggling like it wants to shake that off. But nothing will happen if it doesn't, it'll just fall off later. <laughs> 